Folks, let's talk about black-owned media. Uh, yesterday on the Today Show, uh, Carlos Watson, who is the founder of Ozzy Media, announced that uh, despite the what, what they, was, they announced on Friday, uh, they're not going to be shutting the media company down. He sat down with Craig Melvin uh, on the Today Show and uh, talked about uh, what took place last week with the company, said that he should have done uh, more media interviews and uh, did not like what uh, was being reported about the company and that he said that they're going to be like Lazarus and come back from the dead. Well, yesterday he taped an interview with The Breakfast Club, which aired today. And in that particular interview, a uh, 50 minute interview, he talked about a variety of things, uh, answered their questions. Uh, and during the interview, Charlemagne also revealed that he was an investor uh, in Ozzy as well, apparently invested about $10,000. Well, uh, during the interview, uh, Carlos uh, a couple of times called out me and Soledad O'Brien because we were critical of Ozzy and posts we made. But then at the end of the interview, he brought me up again. Listen to this. Like, look through it. I'd be happy for people to do it. I'd be happy for people to compare it Apples to apples. Are you going to talk to some of these people that's really criticizing you like the Rolling Martins? Would you sit down with Rolling? Would love to. Okay. Love to. Rolling, we're going to make that happen. And, and you know, I was disappointed in Rolling, if I'm honest. Okay. I was disappointed in him, but you know what? Um, maybe I was wrong, and so I'm happy to learn and grow. What disappointed you the most? Um, I, I thought that um, I thought it was a little bit of a crabs, crabs in the bucket sort of thing. I thought that immediately he saw us in trouble, and he just... More than anyone, he was the one retweeting and posting, and, and it was almost assassination-like. And given his experience at CNN and what happened to him, I thought he'd be the last person being involved in that kind of thing. And so, you know, it is what it is, and um, um, and I've got to learn from that, and I've got to get better. But but if you ever see me doing that, let me know if you see me doing that. I hope, I hope you will never see me doing that. I hope even if we have differences, you and I will have the conversation. I won't be out there trying to assassinate people in public along with the mob. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Well, it's Carlos Watson. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Yeah. All right. So uh, let me speak to that. Uh, Carlos, it's very clear that you don't follow me. It's abundantly clear that you don't follow me on social media because if you did, you would realize that I often talk about media stories. I've been in media for 14, since I was 14 years old. Uh, this was not something that I fell into. I didn't go to school majoring in something else and then fell into media uh, later like you did. 
I chose this when I was 14 years old. I'll be 53 years old on November 14th. So this has been my life for 39 years. And if anybody who follows me, they know I often post stories, retweet stories, comment on stories that deal with the media. When I'm doing Joe Concha, who is a media and political columnist for The Hill, who's also with Fox News. Oh, check the timeline. You'll see the comments that I've made directly to him. The other thing is this here, Carlos. You saw what I had to say because I tagged you. See, I ain't no punk. I'm not going to comment about Ozzy and comment about you and not tag you. Uncle Roro, don't subtweet. I'm real clear about being open and honest. Folks criticized me when I cracked on Shakari Richardson for coming in ninth. Why'd you hit the tagger? Because that's what I do. I don't subtweet. So anybody who follows me knows I'm often talking about media, talking about advertising, talking about uh, all of those different things, because this is what I do. This is uh, what I talk about. And I've discussed other media companies owned by black people. So this whole idea that somehow, oh, it's crabs in a bucket. First of all, it's called crabs in a barrel. Um, it's not crabs in a barrel. And then to say, well, I saw an opportunity. I just see an opportunity. The fact of the matter is I am a black owned media company that's serving black people. That's targeting African-Americans. There are others who watch my show who are not black, who do appreciate the show. And I've gotten emails from them, contributions from them. The reality, Carlos, I don't think I've ever heard you say you're a black owned company. You probably have positioned yourself as saying I'm a media company owned by somebody who's African-American. The second thing, when you said you called it assassination. So you don't like the fact that I've retweeted others who have had negative things to say about you. Your former writer, Eugene Robinson, who wrote a very critical sub stack about you, comments that you made about him. What? That can't be retweeted? Are you suggesting, Carlos, that I, as an African-American who owns a media company, that you expected me to be quiet? because it involved you. You and I don't have a relationship. We don't. Our paths have crossed. I remember the reason I think I have your phone number because Constance White, who used to write for Ozzy, I think she's still right. I don't know if she's right for them, said, hey, you and uh, Carlos ought to hook up. She had to send me the number or I sent you a message on LinkedIn, so I got your number. So after the interview yesterday, Charlemagne said, you should call me. You called me. I was busy yesterday with the George Lopez golf tournament. So my booker has already reached out to you, call you and text you about having you come on the show. You sat with the Breakfast Club for 50 minutes. Fine, Carlos. You come on Roland Martin Unfiltered in the Black Star Network. And let's have a conversation about what has transpired. And there's a series of questions that I do have for you. And I've watched the Craig Melvin interview and the interview with The Breakfast Club, and I've got a lot of follow-ups to some stuff that you had to say. But the thing for me, Carlos, that I need you to understand, and anybody who follows me knows this, the model that I have had my entire career has been this. If you do good, I'll talk about you. If you do bad, I'll talk about you. At the end of the day, I'll talk about you. So talking about Ozzy, and reading the New York Times story by Ben Smith that I was quoted in, a subsequent story, reading the story from Forbes, reading Eugene Robinson's account, reading the other accounts as well. Yes, I've seen those stories. And see, Carlos, you can't have it both ways where everybody is wrong and you're right. I'll give you a perfect example. I could hold it for the interview. I'm going to give you a perfect example. During your interview with The Breakfast Club, you castigated Ben Smith for writing about the mental health issues of your COO, the one who impersonated the YouTube executive. 
you said that shouldn't have been written about. Here's the problem with that. Later in the interview, see, I want you to understand, Carlos, how I, I listen to what somebody says. Later in the interview, Charlemagne came back and asked you about it and then said, well, you upset that Ben Smith wrote about it, but you the one who told Ben about the mental issue. And so had you not told Ben about the mental issue, how would Ben have written about the mental issue? Because you told him. See what happens when you listen? And so it's, it's, it's silly. It's nonsensical, Carlos, to act as if, oh, I was disappointed. And then you want to bring up what I went through at CNN. Well, what about it? See, I'll address things head on as well. And so are you suggesting, Carlos, that because I went through some drama at CNN nine years ago, that somehow I can't speak about or talk about something else? Nah, bro, that's not how that happens. And so it wasn't character assassination. It wasn't, ooh, I saw an opportunity. Because what you do at Ozzy is totally different than what I do. I own my blackness. I'm upfront about my blackness. I'm very clear about who I serve. I'm very clear about the audience that I am trying to speak to. And so there, there is no, again, uh, oh my goodness, I am uh, trying to gain some advantage. But I will say this, Carlos, and you and I, We'll talk about this when we have the conversation. I, I will say to you, though, that it is important when we talk about uh, what happened when it came to getting these advertising dollars. And you admitted in your interview with The Breakfast Club how you benefited from the battle. But By Byron Allen and Todd Brown and myself and Butch Graves and Don Jackson uh, and uh, Junior Bridgman uh, and Diddy and others have been engaged in because you have been able to sit back quietly and reap the benefits of the work that we put in. And so we'll see what happens right now. We'll see what happens with the future of Ozzy. I've seen the story of the New York Times where one of your investors is suing you right now for $2 million for failing to disclose what happened with Goldman Sachs and YouTube. We see that another story said the advertisers are staying clear of you. You know what? That's all your business. But what I am going to say, Carlos, I am more than willing to talk with you. I am in LA through Sunday. You, I know you were there in Silicon Valley. You were in New York, today's show, and doing the Breakfast Club. So I'm, interview I'm doing various one-on-one -on -one interviews for a new show on the Black Star Network called Rolling with Roland. And so I have open slots, Carlos, tomorrow on Wednesday. I've got slots open on Thursday. All day Friday is open. Saturday is open. If you find yourself in L.A., come on by. We'll I'll text you the address, and we can have a conversation right here. If you can't come, we'll have a conversation on the show. See, you said to, said to, uh, to uh, Charlemagne, well, Charlemagne, if you see me doing something like this here, you will call me first. That means that you want to have an offline conversation. Well, he's one of the investors in your company. You have a relationship. I don't have a relationship with you. So you and I having a conversation offline. Why? You had one with Craig Melvin on the Today Show. You had one with Charlemagne, DJ Envy, and Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. So we have a conversation, it's going to be a public conversation. And it should be. Because, again, I am a journalist. And what I was raised on, it was about truth, integrity, character, honesty. It was about being upfront and clear. Owning mistakes, not accepting BS. But do not mistake, Carlos. That any criticism that I have is personal, as a vendetta, that it's assassination, or anything along those lines. It's called truth. And truth is what reigns supreme. Truth is what matters. Not fudging, not 
being astray, not, not, not getting too out there, which you admitted in the interview that y'all did with some of your marketing things, how you, uh, and I'll pull the comment up, how you sort of, um, uh, how you, uh, 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 strayed or, you know, you were too aggressive, whatever, with some claims made. Where I come from, we call that lying. But we'll go over all of that in the conversation that we have. But don't ever, Carlos, get it twisted. Don't ever assume that anything I do is trying to assassinate somebody. It's called speaking truth. All day, every day, 24-7, 365, 366 in a leap year. Folks, back to roll my unfiltered video in just one moment. Oh, that spin class was brutal. Well, you can try using the Buick's massaging seat. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Can I use Apple CarPlay to put some music on? Sure. It's wireless. Pick something we all like. Okay, hold on. What's your Buick's Wi-Fi password? Buick Envision 2021. Oh, you should pick something stronger. That's really predictable. That's a really tight spot. Don't worry. I used to hate parallel parking. Me too. Hey. Really outdid yourself. Yes, we did. The all-new Buick Envision, an SUV built around you. All of time you. to be smart. Roland Martin's doing this every day. Oh no, punches! Thank you, Roland Martin, for always giving voice to the issues. Look for Roland Martin in the whirlwind. To quote Marcus Garvey again. The video looks phenomenal, so I'm really excited to see it on my big screen. Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. See, this difference between. Black Star Network and Black owned media and something like CNN. I got to defer to the brilliance of Dr. Carr and to the brilliance of the Black Star Network. I am rolling with rolling all the way. Honored to be on a show that you own. A black man <laughs> owns the show. Folks, Black Star Network is here. I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. Rolling was amazing on that. Stay black. I love y'all. I can't commend you enough about this platform that you've created for us to be able to share who we are, what we're doing in the world, and the impact that we're having. Let's be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You can't be black on media and be scared. You dig? Sage Steele, anchor at ESPN. Uh, she is uh, quite known for making other controversial comments that have ticked a whole bunch of black people off. Well, Sage stepped in it again when she did the podcast of former uh, NFL quarterback Jay Cutler and some comments that she made about a variety of topics, including this about President Barack Obama. Uh, when you fill out your census, I'm like, well, I don't know when the last time I filled out my census was, but yeah. if they make you choose a race, yeah. she's like, what are you going to put? And I go, well, both. She's like, well, you can't. She goes, well, what if Barack Obama chose black and he's biracial? I'm like, well, congratulations to the president. That's his thing. I go, I think that's fascinating consider considering his black dad was nowhere to be found, but his white mom and grandma raised him. But hey, mm -hmm. you do you. I'm going to do me. Okay, that caused lots of problems there. Then the one that really ticked off a lot of people was this comment about women in media and what they wear. But it, here's the thing, there is a fine line and I handled it. Like I yeah. didn't get anybody because that's not my person, it wasn't my personality then. I might now a little more, yeah. um, but I do think as women, we need to be responsible as well. It isn't just on players and athletes mm -hmm. and coaches to act a certain way. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had talks with young women who like would come in and they'd intern um, with, with me, with our channel, or just other women who reach out to me now. And I've said to the, a couple of them, they're like, well, would you look at my tape? Would you do this? And, I, and I've said, listen, I would love to, but the way that you present yourself is not something I want to be associated with. Yeah. So when you dress like that, yeah. I'm not saying you deserve the gross comments, but you know what you're doing when you're putting that outfit on too. Yeah. Like women are smart. So don't play coy and put it all on the guys when we 
And again, I'm not saying anybody deserves anything. Yes. But we need to be responsible as women too, because we know what we're doing when we put certain things on and, and then oh. return a certain text. Are you expect somebody's not going to see you if you go to dinner with this guy? Like that's on us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that's so true. And we, and I all right, so a lot of this started uh, because uh, Sage Steele was not happy that she was forced to take the COVID vaccine if she wanted to keep her job at ESPN. Disney, like many companies, are requiring their employees to be vaccinated. This is what she had to say about vaccines. I, I think to mandate, I respect everyone's decision. I really yeah. do. Yeah. But to mandate it is um, sick mm -hmm. and it's scary yeah. to me in many ways. Um, but I have a job, yeah. a job that I love and frankly, a job that I, that I need. But again, I love it. Yeah. I just, um, I'm not surprised it got to this point, especially mm -hmm. with Disney. I mean, a, a global company. Like yes. Well, so what are we now dealing with? Sage has apologized uh, because this thing really blew up. Uh, this is her apology. Please pull it up. All right. She says, I know my recent comments created controversy for the company, and I apologize. We're in the midst of an extremely challenging time that impacts all of us, and it's more critical than ever that we communicate constructively and thoughtfully. Here's ESPN's statement. Please pull it up. All right, then, at ESPN, we embrace different points of view. Dialogue and discussion makes this place great. That said, we expect that those points of view be expressed respectfully in a manner consistent with our values and in line with our internal policies. We're having direct conversations with Sage, and those conversations will remain private. Now, here's what's very interesting when you uh, analyze uh, those particular uh, statements. And it was uh, a journalist, uh, Karan Phillips. He actually uh, uh, tweeted this out. Uh, and he said, uh, wow, quite the different statements from ESPN regarding, say, steel compared uh, to when ESPN issued uh, their uh, statements when Jamel Hill uh, called uh, Donald Trump a white supremacist. And I'm going to sh show you these two. And I found, I found it to be, again, real interesting. So th this was the ESPN statement that they sent out with Jamel Hill. The comments on Twitter from Jamel Hill regarding the president do not represent the position of ESPN. We have addressed this with Jamel and she recognizes her actions were inappropriate. Now, that's totally separate than what they had to say about Sage Steele. Now, also uh, in her particular uh, comments, uh, Sage, uh, she uh, had some uh, positive things to say. Uh, about, come back to me please, about Candace Owens, which uh, was quite interesting. Uh, and so, look, uh, Sage Steele has a history. Uh, she was uh, of making some comments that she was uh, quite, um, you know, critical of Colin Kaepernick. Uh, that was a point um, when she um, was uh, on a flight from Los Angeles and was upset about immigration protests that were going on. You might remember she accused uh, a couple of black colleagues uh, at uh, a couple of black colleagues at ESPN uh, from uh, accused them of actually uh, keeping her out of a conversation dealing uh, with race. And again, she in her comments, she complimented uh, that that clueless fool uh, Candace Owens. We know how idiot she is. Um, the thing that also uh, is so check, so check this out. So let me just go ahead and do this. I'm going to play for you. Uh, what she had to say about uh, Candace Owens. Here we go. It's what? <laughs> Wait, what? what where, where did you read that? I forget. I mean, I forget where I read it, but I, I made me laugh. <laughs> uh, wow. I I respect the hell out of Candace Owens. So do I. And, and, and yeah, I'm, and I'm like. First of all, you guys, the audio wasn't right, so let's, I'm going to play that comment again. So I want to, so I want you to hear it uh, in full. Okay, so uh, here we go. I'm, and I'm like, I get it. Like, yeah, we all the, have. A you're thing. the you're the Candace Owens of ESPN. It's what. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what? Where where did you read that? I forget. I mean, I forget where I read it, but I it made me laugh. <laughs> uh, wow. I I respect the hell out of Candace Owens. So do I. And, 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 
yeah, time. And I'm like, I get it. Like, yeah, we you're all so, have you're, the, um, you're the Candace. Uh, 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 allow me, uh, allow me to, uh, allow me to unpack this. Okay, uh, f- first and foremost. Um, you know, Sage Steele has made comments in the past because she's biracial. Um, and what she's done is, um, you know, her deal is, you know, uh, why do you have to, you know, leave out one parent and identify uh, with um, another? Okay, I get it. Uh, and, but here's the thing that trips me off. Um, um, the thing that she is, that's crazy here, is that how dare you question, how dare you question how President Obama chooses to identify himself? Okay? How? Um, what I don't understand is if that man chooses to self-identify, that's his business. Now, what's so idiotic about Sage's comments is that she was upset about having to choose a race. Well, if you go back to the first U.S. Census, you've had to identify a race since 1790. Since 1790. Okay? That, to me, is crazy. It's crazy. Okay? 1790. 1790, identify with race. But see, what's the problem here is for her to assert that, well, he grew up with a white mother and he didn't know his black dad, but he's identifying as black. Sage, your daddy's white. Your mama's black. Sage, let's be real clear. You are not walking out on the street anywhere and somebody goes, hey, there goes a white woman. You know it and I know it. Sage, here's the deal. And this is why I know your comment here is idiotic and makes no sense. When they were had the issue on race, the special on race, and Michael Eves and L. Duncan were involved, you got upset because you were not included. Well, Sage, if you consider yourself a white woman, why would you be included? Okay, you're biracial. Got it. But that's just stupid. And she goes, oh, I think it's fascinating. Halle Berry. Halle? Is biracial just like you. Halle Berry calls herself a black woman. There are other biracial people who call themselves the exact same thing. So for you to sit here and make this comment makes no sense whatsoever. And it's idiotic. And then when you're talking about how women addressing, well, no, no, I'm not saying that these things should happen, but you got, what the hell? ESPN has removed her from a women's summit that they're doing as well that's supposed to be happening in a couple of weeks. But it's very telling who you are as an individual. And here's the whole deal. I don't care if you are a black, I'm sorry, Sage, a biracial conservative. But if I respect the hell out of Candace Owens, you're admitting you're an idiot. Because anybody who respects Candace Owens, who is absolutely stuck on stupid, who knows what the hell she's talking about, who knows what the hell she's saying, you actually respect that and call yourself a journalist? That's why you're getting questioned. That's why you're getting dragged. And you've earned every single bit of it. Period. And so, Sage, how about actually using some damn common sense with these nutcase takes that you have? And ESPN should have suspended you for a week. 
should have. And maybe you're now going to learn. And here's the whole deal, Sage. Go to Fox Sports. Go to Fox, go to Fox News and join your former ESPN colleague, Will Kane. If that's the point of view that you want to offer, go right ahead. But really, stop with the gaslighting of black people. Because you're uncomfortable that an Obama would call himself black. And also, what the hell is his dad not being there have to do with it? In fact, Kerry Champion, let me pull this tweet up. Uh, former ESPN anchor uh, Kerry Champion weighed in uh, on this. And I'm going to pull I'm going to pull it up uh, uh, to show you. Um, and so because I, I just thought that this tweet w was really uh, important. So let me see here. Uh, uh, let me see if I can find it here. I just thought it was really, really interesting, um, you know, w what she tweeted, because I mean, it's, it's just dumb. It's just really dumb when, when, when you see these comments uh, coming from a black woman. Oh, sorry, a biracial woman uh, in, in the case of, say, Steele. You know, and, and this whole, you know, you know, woe is me and all this. I, I just, uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm tired of it. And this thing that, you know, you know, you are like, you like, like somehow, oh, because you are, um, you are so conservative or whatever you want to call yourself. That's fine. But it's just, it's just ridiculous. It's just utterly ridiculous. This is the tweet from Kerry Champion. Sigh, my dad wasn't around when I was younger. I'm still black. That's what Carrie Champion tweeted. And she's right. So this notion that, oh, if your dad wasn't around, that's about dictates what you, what you should call yourself on the census. Yeah, that's weak. And, and you know what? I'm bringing the panel here, Teresa. I'm, I'm just, it's, 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 it's really utterly ridiculous that Sage still continues to embarrass herself. I met Sage. I know Sage. Um, I'm, we're not friends. Uh, I know if, you know, seeing her at National Association of Black Journalists Convention and things along those lines. But I, I, I just don't, for the life of me, this, the comment that she made about Obama, and I just find it fascinating. He identifies as black, and his dad wasn't even around. What the hell? Yeah, that's the right question to ask, but especially for somebody who's in the journalism industry. Um, I've watched Sage myself, and I've read her tweets. I've I've listened to her, um, her commentary. I've seen her at black conventions, and I've seen her in at those black conventions identify as black and not biracial. So um, I feel like she is personally suffering something that I think every— and I have a lot of friends who are biracial— biracial person goes through, but I think she's just channeling it in a different way. Um, there are certain individuals who I guess, you know, who may be of the right persu persuasion who accepts her a little bit more. Now, it's okay to be Republican and conservative, but when it comes to, when it, I, I think probably what took me back was how she embraced new individuals that come to her on the way that they dress. And again, as a black woman myself, 100%, if I didn't have a suit on, if, or if I didn't have the right dress on, it was at the right length, and I was bringing all this talent, or maybe I, my suitcase was locked in a, a storage room and I didn't have the key and I had to get to that meeting, is she saying that she will not even take uh, the, the time to even talk to me? And again, that could be a missed opportunity. So, I, you know, as I, I, I listen to her, I almost feel um, just sad and um, because, again, this is another, you know, black, white woman that is suffering something so deep that I feel like there there has to be more to it. I mean, you know, I'm, I've am i been one to say I'm not a fan of Candace Owens, um, but I also understand why people um, take to her. And, and, and part of that is she's spewing off the some nonsense and she's getting paid handsomely. And so those who are willing to sell their soul for uh, for two minutes of spotlight um, and they give you a show and they give you branding, those are the people that, you know, unfortunately we have those who want to be in the mix and just don't know how to get in. So they model it and, and they feel like this is where they need to go. So fortunately we just, just could pray for our sister. 
Uh, and look, apparently her dad is black, mom white. Okay, fine. Uh, either way, it doesn't matter. But it's, it's still nonsensical. And again, if you uh, want, if you're biracial, Mustafa, that's fine. If you want to identify as white and black, I got no problem with that. I'm perfectly fine with that. Uh, but what's stupid to me, what's absolutely idiotic to me, um, is this somehow notion uh, that a person doesn't get to decide that they do. And her, his dad not being anywhere there has nothing to do with any of this. Well, you know, when you have folks like Sage saying the stuff that she does, you know, it, it's almost like a, a headline in the National Enquirer. People say these types of things because they want attention. And not only do they want attention, but they also, you know, as Teresa said, are it's trying to set themselves up for their next gig. My problem is more on the substance of the things that she's talking about. So when you say that you never filled out the census, then that tells me that you're not also concerned about, you know, the resources that are tied to that that can help our communities to be able to move forward. So that's about substance. When you say that, you know, you're against mandates for vaccines, then you don't unpack that because we understand that our communities disproportionately are dying from that. So if you don't see yourself connected to the African-American community, it plays out in the decisions that you are making in your personal life. And then, of course, also, when she made that comment about the young sister coming to her that Teresa just talked about, that also says something. When you're not willing to invest the time with a younger person to help them to get together the things that may be necessary for them to navigate, you know, the corporate world or the sports world, then that also says something about you and your commitment to those individuals or to folks who come from a similar set of backgrounds that you may be, um, that you came from. So you gotta, you gotta look at the substance of what the sister is saying and then begin to unpack whatever trauma or hurt that she might be dealing with based upon, you know, how she came up um, and the decisions that she's currently made. You know, I'm concerned with the message that she's sending about the substance of things that actually impact our communities. You know, she want to be on Fox News. That's all good. But don't put our people continually in the crosshairs by the decisions that you're making when you know what the facts are. She's a bright, you know, she's a bright young lady. So she knows all these things that are happening inside of our communities. And she should be much more careful with the things that, that you know, that she's spouting. Michael, look, I don't care what her personal issues are. I don't care what drama she's going through. Bottom line is this here. Uh, when you make these type of comments where you're questioning uh, someone else, uh, hey, it's foul, it's wrong, and when you are in a, in a responsible position, you need to do They need to do better. But, you know, uh, first of all, I pay very little attention to Sage Steele. Um, I, I read the article that the Griot has about these comments and the the blow up. But you know, to, to quote uh, a great South African freedom fighter, Bantu Stephen Biko, the most potent weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. The most potent weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. And she's a perfect example of that. Uh, she. So we just go through and just look at some of these idiotic comments she she made. Um, she talked about. Um, President Barack Obama uh, identifying as black on the census, and then she says she doesn't remember the last time she filled out a census form. Hopefully, it was 2020, because that's when the last census was. Hopefully, it was 2020, last time she filled it out. Second, right. I mean, she, like, she literally said, oh, I, I, can't, I, I can't remember the last time I filled out the census last year. 